Hi, thanks for joining us today. We are here to talk about low latency, real time ad spacing queries. I'm Lakshmi and I have Brianna with me and we are software engineers at Reddit. We are a part of the monetization team, specifically the ads, events and platform team. We build data pipelines and event processing systems for ads engineering. And today we are here to explain how Druid has helped us in ad serving. What if every user activity changes the decision to show an ad? Now, this is a packed question. Let's unpack this into two components. The first one being user activity, and the second is the decision-making process. A user comes to a Reddit page, and we want to show an ad to the user. Reddit makes a request to the ad serving system, and it's responded with an ad unit, which can be shown to the user. The user then can choose to view the ad or click the ad, and these are called user activity. Any user activity is recorded and is processed by the event collection platform. Uh, this data is then aggregated, validated, and is fed back into the ad serving system via ad pacing. We will talk about ad pacing in detail shortly, but as you can already see, this is a feedback loop where the user activity flows back into the ad serving, which somehow impacts the ad serving to the same user. There are three components of the ad serving system that we want to talk about here. Uh, the first one is budget. Budget is the dollar value that the advertiser wants to spend on a campaign. Campaigns are nothing but a set of advertisements. The advertiser can choose to spend the campaign uh, budget over the period of lifetime or it can also have a daily cap. Uh, spend is the cost associated in showing the ad to the user, and that is driven by user activity. Now, the pacing system evenly uh, tries to spend through the course of the campaign. Uh, why should it uh, distribute evenly is also because we want to show the ads when there is user activity or when there is an increased user activity. Uh, we also don't want to show the ads all at once in the beginning and not show anything through the rest of the day. Uh, we also don't want to use up the budget the very first day, very first hour, and not have anything else to spend later. Um, not just distributing evenly, uh, pacing also does a bunch of decision making. Now let's talk about decision making. Let's assume that we have an active flight. Flight is also known as an ad group. And the first question is whether the flight has a valid budget. If there is a valid budget, what kind of goal is set on the flight? Um, is it a lifetime goal? Is it a daily goal? If it is a lifetime goal, has the goal been reached? Um, if not, which means that we have some spend left on the campaign, we can go ahead and pace with the remaining budget left. The same thing applies for the daily budget as well. Now let's talk about the uh, pipeline here. This is the same system we discussed before, um, which includes uh, the backend pipelines. So the metadata, metadata is the response to the ad request, which is logged to Kafka. And we also have uh, the user actions, which are collected by the event collector and are logged to Kafka as well. We then take these events, do a batch processing, validation, aggregation, and feed them back to the ad serving loop. Um, now, why do we need uh, validation? Is because we want to account for uh, invalid traffic or we want to validate against bot traffic. Um, the user could have clicked on the ad multiple times. So there is a deduplication as well. So all of this is a part of the validation process. What is the aggregation step? Is um, we've already discussed that uh, the budget is set on the campaign level. So you uh, do not want to show raw events to ad serving. Instead, show only um, instead show the total spend on a campaign to ad serving, and that is the aggregation process. Let's talk about getting the spend data for the ad spacing system. Um, we've already discussed that the ad spacing system wants near real time data, which means that they want the data as and when a user activity has happened. Batch processing system is definitely not capable of doing it. There is a um, inherent delay in processing these events. 
um, and it is a two-step process. So in our case, the delay is two hours. Um, what we did for that is that we accompanied this batch solution with the stream processing solution. Uh, there is some minimum validation in the stream processing solution. There is also some deduplication. Um, the reason why I say some is that the user can click on an ad uh, beyond the attribution window of the stream processing system. Uh, but stream processing system is near real time. So how this works for us is that um, starting from the beginning of the day or starting from the beginning of the campaign, we use the batch data up until two hours ago. And anything two hours before up until current timestamp, we use the stream processing solution. This kind of seems to work, but is there anything we are missing? Uh, now for argument's sake, let's assume that we are using only batch solution. Uh, the data is a few hours behind. In that case, the metrics are computed lower than usual, which means that for the missing data, um, the ad spacing system assumes that we have not spent enough and tries to spend more, and that is the over delivery, which results in spending too fast. Now, with our batch plus streaming solution, it kind of works, but we are not accounting for the bot traffic or duplicates in streaming data. Um, metrics are computed higher than actual, which results in under delivery because the pacing system thinks that we have already spent enough and tries to not spend as much. Is there a perfect solution? I'll let, let Priyana talk more about the perfect solution that worked for us. Thanks, Lakshmi. Now I'll talk about what we got to work, which is a solution using Flink and Druid. So the centerpiece of this solution is a real-time streaming app application using Flink streaming. So let's see how the ad serving loop works now. Users interact with ads on Reddit, either by viewing or clicking them. Then just like before, Reddit sends these actions to the event collector, which sends the user actions to Kafka. The ad server also sends metadata to Kafka. But now, instead of a batch process, we have this near real-time Flink streaming application that reads both of these topics from Kafka, validates and deduplicates the events, and then writes the result back to Kafka in a new topic called validated tracking events. Then Druid directly ingests these events from Kafka into a Druid data source using Druid's Kafka streaming ingestion. Finally, ad serving reads this data from Druid in order to make pacing and budgeting decisions. So what do we query from Druid? So there are two types of queries that we do. First, there are the daily queries. This is what we care about for ads whose budget resets every day. So for these ads, we only care about spend and clicks and views that happened from the start of the current calendar day. So that's what we query. We query from the start of today up until the current millisecond. We want to do this query as often as necessary so we can pace as accurately as possible. Why do we do these queries? Distribution, in other words, serving the ads consistently throughout the day, and also tallying up the spend for daily goals. Then there are the lifetime queries. We care about this for ads and ad groups and campaigns whose budget is the entire lifetime of the campaign or ad group. So for this, we query from the start of the campaign up until the start of the current day. We only need to do these queries a few times a day. And we do them for two reasons. First, we use this to generate temporary daily goals that we can use for daily pacing on these ads. And also we need to keep a tally of total spend and views and clicks for the lifetime budget so we know when to stop serving the ad. Why do we use Druid for this? Well, the most important reason is fast queries. Using Druid, we can get second latency. Also, real-time ingestion directly from Kafka. That means we get low lag on ingestion. There's also no code needed for ingestion. All we need to do is specify a JSON ingestion spec and it just reads from Kafka. Ingestion time aggregation, 
This is important because the thing that we're putting in Druid is individual events. So a separate event for each time a user views or clicks an ad. So by aggregating these at ingestion time rather than at query time, it makes the queries a lot faster. And finally, Druid Kafka stream ingestion has exactly once guarantees. These are important when we're querying aggregate stats like the sum of all spend. So here are some challenges and solutions we've encountered while working on this. One challenge is the differences in Kafka partition latency. So what this means is Kafka doesn't guarantee in order data across partitions. So for example, let's say we have a topic that has three partitions, one, two, and three. In partition one, the last event is one minute ago. In partition two, the most recent event was five minutes ago. And in partition three, the most recent event was three minutes ago. So each partition is behind the current time by a different amount. So suppose we ingested into Druid from all three of these partitions, and then we did a query for all the data we have. It would look like we had data up until one minute ago, but it's actually incomplete because for the data from five minutes ago through one minute ago, we don't have the events from all three partitions. So we have missing data and we have no way to know that we have missing data just by looking at the query results. The way we handle this is by cutting off the query for Druid data a few minutes early. So first, when we ingest the data from Kafka into Druid, we use minute query granularity. Then when we're doing a query, we do two steps. First, we get the most recent minute that has any data in Druid. Then, instead of ending our query right at that minute, we end it a few minutes before instead. This should make up for the fact that not all partitions might have data right up until that most recent minute. So looking at the diagram, if we cut off our query where that dotted line is, then even though it might look like the data is a little older than it would otherwise, we can at least know that all of the minutes up until the last minute that we queried have all data from all partitions. It's not incomplete. So what we need for accurate pacing is data up to the latest millisecond. But what we have, because we're cutting off the query like this, is data up to the last few minutes. The solution we came up with is to combine what's in Druid with speculative data. So when we're querying the data and the results that we send to Ad Selector, the results look like this. From the start of the day or the start of all time, if this is a lifetime query, up until a few minutes ago, we have these near real-time metrics that we're getting from Flink and Druid. Then from a few minutes ago up until the current timestamp, we have speculative data. Now, this is the same speculative data that we're using in the old system to fill in the gaps from the batch data. The difference is we only have a few minutes of it here instead of two hours. So the amount of inaccuracy we get from it is much less. Another challenge we have is that lifetime queries are too slow. And the problem in a few words is there are too many rows. When we're, when we're ingesting data from Kafka, we store it at minute query granularity. And when we tried querying the data stored at minute query, query granularity, on a lifetime basis, it was just too slow. And auto compaction, though we tried it, didn't help enough. The solution we came up with is Druid manual compaction. So this happens on a schedule basis with three different schedules. We compact the data to day, month, and year query and segment granularities. And we do it after enough time has passed that we don't need any more fine-grained data than that so that we don't lose any accuracy. Uh, a nice side effect of this is that compaction also optimizes the segment size for faster queries, since when we're ingesting from Kafka, the segment size may not necessarily be optimal. As a result of this, 
our query time uh, for lifetime data is 10 to 15 seconds. And that is plenty fast enough for the lifetime query use case. Finally, one more challenge we have is getting real-time data eventually consistent with batch data. So we have these two different data sources now. We have this batch data that is still considered our source of truth, and we use it for reporting, showing the customers. And then we have this Flink and Druid data that we use for pacing. It's possible to have some discrepancies between these two data sources. One source is Flink outages that could cause occasional data loss. We also have these tiny differences in invalid traffic handling between the batch logic and the Flink streaming logic. These differences are less than 0.01% of total spend. But when you add these differences up over the lifetime of a campaign or over time in general, they can add up to large absolute differences and make big differences in the pacing decisions that end up getting made. So our, our solution to this is to use a Lambda architecture. That is, repopulate Druid from the batch data at the end of each day after waiting long enough for all the batch data to be ready for that day. So now, when we're doing a lifetime query, our results look like this. From the start of time to the start of today, what we're getting is batch data that's been ingested to Druid. And this is 100% consistent with the batch data that we use for reporting. Then, from the start of today to a few minutes ago, we have these near real-time metrics that are also in Druid but come from Flink. And these two are in the same data source, so we only need to do one query to get them. And then finally, from a few minutes ago to the current timestamp, we fill it in with that speculative data that, that doesn't come from Druid, it comes from elsewhere. And now I'm going to ask Lakshmi to talk about the results. Thank you, Brianna. Because the window of speculative data is much less in the solution, the result is we have less under delivery. Is there over delivery? Maybe. But we have explained before that over delivery happens only when the metrics are computed lower than actual. There are three main factors that could cause us to compute metrics lower than actual. The first one is user-driven. User activities may be delayed. For instance, the user can click on an ad 10 minutes after viewing the ad. So for the 10 minutes, the system assumes that there has been no click and there is an inherent over-delivery. System-driven. Even speculative data has some word of a latency. And the third one is infrastructure-driven. This happens when there is a serious outage with Kafka or any other database in the pipeline. Um, this is possible only when there is an irrecoverable data loss situation scenario. Uh, the data loss should be both metadata and the user actions. If that is the case, then we will have an over delivery. That's all I had for today. Thank you for listening to us and please get in touch. We hang out at Reddit Engineering subreddit. Thank you. Mm -hmm.